Yo, <laughs> what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Pat here, and today I want to talk about 7199 tubes. The 7199 tube is not a common tube. You're going to see it mostly associated with old Ampegs and Dynaco stuff like the ST70. And they've gotten pretty scarce. This is not a tube that's common enough where they make one. It's actually a really difficult tube to manufacture. It's actually a triode and pentode in one glass envelope. And we're going to talk about that. Uh, the cost of 7199s is through the roof. Uh, I'm seeing it over $150 for a tube now. And I got to tell you, if you order one, there's no guarantee that this tube is going to work for you because there's one issue this tube has that does not mate well with guitar amps, microphonic rattle. These tubes rattle then and now. So the, you know, it, the price has gone sky high. So what do we do when we have to replace a tube that's no longer made and it's just not cost effective to replace? Tube substitution. Believe it or not, there was a time where technicians used to come to your house. They'd have these things called vans. So you'd go to your telephone if your television or your radio or stereo broke. You go to your telephone and you would dial five, 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 five. And someone from the trade parade would show up and they would service your, your radio, your television right there in your own home. Crazy, right? And they would show up with a tube substitution handbook, a RCA receiving tube manual, and a tube caddy full of tubes. They certainly could not bring every single tube you know, that was available. So there was a lot of substitutions then when people were making home service calls. Today, there really isn't much substitution, but we have an issue with the 7199 tube. Being that it's become so costly, we have generally substitute it with something. So there are some options. Now there are no direct subs for this tube. So you can get an adapter or you can rewire the socket. And we're going to do that now with this Ampeg. So the reason why we're just not going to use the adapter is that the tube shield housing is just a little too small to fit the adapter. So we're going to rewire the socket. Now the two tubes that we can use here for substitution are the 6U8 and the 6GH8. Microphonic rattle starts to happen when internal elements of the vacuum tube start to physically and mechanically rattle, and you can hear it in the audio path. You can also hear it outside the audio path. Take a listen. Okay, so we're going to move the wire from pin 2 to pin 6, pin 6 to pin 7, and pin 7 to pin 2. So this red wire here, I'm going to decider and remove it. It's not long enough to make it over to pin 6. Let's clean up this nub left behind here. This is our new wire that will go to pin 6. Now I'm going to remove this gray shielded wire. I'm going to shorten it also. Now I'm going to solder in the red wire into pin six. We're going to reuse this yellow wire, solder it into pin seven. That was initially in pin six. I also like to put a little nail polish when I do these conversions because I want a technician on the fly, if they were to look inside, I want them to see that I already did the conversion. It also looks attractive. A quick attractive way to kind of notate that you did a modification, I think is always a good thing. So the specs of the 7199 and the 6U8 and the 6GH8 are almost identical. The 7199 is a triode and pentode in one tube. The reason why they're able to do that is because this tube can only run on 6 volts. If you think of a 12AX7, right, it's two triodes in one tube. But you can run the 12AX7 
at 12 volts or 6 volts. This tube, to save a pin, they only allow you to run it at 6, and you have an extra pin so that you can have one side a pentode. Looking at the spec sheets of these tubes, there's really almost no difference. It's close enough for rock and roll. The uh, amplification factor here on the 6U8 is 40 on the triode. It's 20 on the 7199. And you're not going to hear a difference in this Ampeg with slightly more gain on the triode because the triode here is used as the phase inverter. And a cathodine split load is unity gain. So the guitar signal comes in here. And we have an output here and then an output out of phase here. What comes in, what comes out, unity gain. So changing this value of MU will make no difference in the circuit. The ST70 is a brilliant, elegant example of using the 7199 tube at its max potential. This is a stereo hi-fi amp, right? We only have one preamp tube, one side, 7199. Check this out. So a pentode is going to have a lot more gain than the triode. So our audio signal comes in here to the pentode portion of the tube where we get a lot of output, a very large amount of gain that goes into our Unity split load phase inverter which drives a pair of EL34s. This is a brilliant, simple design. I mean, look how efficient that is.